minute. Let, let me just put this up because this is basically the size of it right here. Um, you know, there's problems all over the country. It's not a red state, blue state thing. And, uh, you know, we talked about it on the postpartum podcast. Uh, I talked to some guys the other day who are m definitely more to the right than I am. <clears throat> they watch guys like Dan Bongino and very MAGA. But, you know, they sound like leftists in a lot of forums, but then they still have that cult mentality on a lot of this stuff. You know, the 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 migrant workers thing is a big one for me. And uh, because these people aren't the enemy, the people who are using them for cheap labor are the enemy, not the not the Mexican people or the migrant workers from any Latin country or any country for that matter, coming in looking for jobs. And I don't disagree that we need to do a better job at the border, but this is about this Ukraine thing. And uh, I'm just going to continue here with some more uh, commentary from Scott Ritter since we were already talking to Scott Ritter or listening to Scott Ritter. But here's uh, kind of his take on the current state of things in the Ukraine. Again, from the Napolitano show. And this may be why they're in Brussels. The proposed loan. I mean, who would lend money to an entity that you, you know is more likely than not not to exist a year from now? But the EU is planning on lending 100 billion euros to Ukraine. Now, I don't know if that's cash. I don't know if it's securities. I don't know if it's the equivalent in equipment. I don't know if the loan's going to come all at once. At one point, they said it would be $25 billion a year. What good can possibly come from that other than more Ukraine deaths of young people? Well, the interesting part is that, uh, is that while the European Union is talking about loaning this, uh, listen to Kaleba. What? You're going to make us pay interest? We have to pay it back? We don't want that. I mean, it's 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 amazing the hubris uh, of of the Ukrainians. I think what the Europeans are doing is um, is is setting in motion a process designed to motivate the U.S. Congress to step in and say, "We'll do one better. We're going to give you a loan. Uh, there'll be zero interest." You heard Lindsey Graham talk about this: zero interest, and we understand you'll never have to pay it back. Um, and I think that's what the Europeans are doing. They're trying to kickstart the American Congress to get uh, such a loan package in. But again, I just want to say, as an American, I, I take umbrage at that. Uh, what, you're going to give the Ukrainians um, tens of billions of dollars of interest-free loans that they don't have to pay back? But if I want to send my kid to college, I got to take out a loan that you're going to charge me 25 to 32 percent, and I have to pay it back. I can't declare bankruptcy and make this debt go away, thanks to Joe Biden. Um, I, I think that this is a politically untenable um you know, uh, solution. Uh, it's one that will, um, I would hope, uh, generate outrage amongst the American people um, to the extent that it becomes politically untenable. We shouldn't be giving money to Ukraine at this point in time. We should be convincing the Ukrainians to back off. This is like saying that you want to help somebody with a drug addiction. Oh, by the way, here's uh, five kilos of cocaine. Go ahead and snort away. Um, you know, giving Ukraine money at this point is it's, it's you're throwing money away because Ukraine has lost this war. They're not going to win this war. There's nothing we can do to prevent that. But the um, um, but you're the, just sustaining the suffering. The the money that um, Sec uh, Speaker Johnson, Mike Johnson, is now negotiating to give away, doesn't most of that stay here? Doesn't most of that go directly to uh, Raytheon and Honeywell and whoever's building this? This is the rub. Uh, this right hardware here. It doesn't even go to Ukraine, no. as I understand. I want to stop here for just a second and give credit to Bill Maher, who actually pointed out how the defense industry is largely a jobs program. They have they have arms and they have operations in every state. They have their arm in every congressman and every representative. And what he just described is proof of that. But to his discredit, Bill Maher doesn't see that in on this issue. You know, he's one of those like, we got to get Putin. We got to get Putin guys who still thinks in Cold War terms that Russia is still communist and Putin's trying to take over Europe because they've been brainwashed to think that. Standard. Well, that's the argument that uh, that they're making, and that's true. Uh, the the money, uh, a lot of this money, uh, is meant not to um, give Ukraine weapons. <laughs> Again, the idea. Just think about this, people. 
Ukraine needs weapons. Ukraine needs this. So we're going to give them a package, but 60% of it doesn't go to Ukraine. It right. goes to build weapons. Or do they even know what they're voting on? Do they even know what they're doing? 40% no, they, they, is going to go to slaughter more Ukrainian young men, and 60% is going to go to the military industrial complex so that they can continue to make donations to the members of Congress well, who voted in favor of this. That that's This is what they're saying about the Ukraine in the mainstream news. And we're going to we're going to really chop this up a little bit so listen to some of this joining us now is former democratic congresswoman and chair of the commission on the national defense strategy jane harvin chair on the commission for the national defense strategy okay that's interesting i want to start by pointing out that michael Steele here is the former rnc chair how many Republicans are at MSNBC? It's literally like all neocon former Bush Republicans now. Steve Schmidt, Nicole Wallace, Joe Scarborough, Michael Steele. I mean, I'm sure there's more, but those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But listen to what Jane Harmon here has to say, and then we'll go into the weeds on who she is and why she's here. Have you, Thank you, Michael. Hi, Congresswoman. Good to see you. Hello. Uh, Hello, all. So there were parents of uh, some of the Israeli hostages in Gaza on Morning Joe earlier this week, and they were sort of saying that they felt like they and their families were forgotten sort of by these developments and how President Biden has pushed Netanyahu to reopen, you know, uh, pathways for aid. So there it is. There it is. There's there's the reason they're they're doing the protest now, because that's how they're going to argue against doing anything for Gaza is, oh, you're hurting the feelings of the hostage people. After this world central kitchen situation, to me, it suggests that Biden could have called Netanyahu up at any time during this war and said, hey, you need to do X, Y and Z because of how he's now shifting. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Th this has been the case all along, lady. What's the weather like on your planet? Do you see it that way? Well, not quite, but you can keep two things in mind at the same time. Not quite. One is <laughs> oh my God, this lady. Uh, listen, to humanitarian this. aid for starving people uh, who have sadly been isolated by this uh, very aggressive and I think not very effective Israeli strategy in in Gaza. They're not achieving their objectives, in my view. Uh, although I support their objective to eliminate uh, 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 the Hamas uh, uh, governance, but but there's keep that in mind. They're not achieving their objectives in, in her view. Does that mean they need more money? Probably. That, but the hostages include six Americans mm -hmm. and 30 Americans were killed on October 7th. And I don't know why that's not a bigger part of the conversation. That is really traumatizing Israeli uh, psyche. And, and I think it is way past time uh, to focus on ending that piece of this. And I, I gather that Bill Burns is headed to Egypt uh, to try to negotiate that. Sure, a, a sticking point is how many got to get this under control before the election hostages or how many prisoners let's go there how many palestinian prisoners have to be traded um, but i think they can get over that if these people stay in captivity a little longer it's been six months more and more of them are going to die and this will be sadly uh, a, a real policy failure this is so uh okay now we'll get to the, to the relevant piece of this here so take this and, and you you had um, some very interesting insights in the last few days, having just re uh, arrived back from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, you, we had uh, Ambassador Bridget Brink, uh, our U.S. Uh -huh. ambassador to Ukraine on Twitter, noting great meeting today with a delegation from National Defense Strategy Commission led by Jane Harmon. We discussed the importance of our continued support to Ukraine in its fight for freedom against Russia's illegal and brutal aggression. Update. That's beautiful, man. Get us on those conversation uh, in your meetings with advisors uh, to President Zelensky and uh, the U.S. ambassador. Well, we spent uh, two days in Ukraine, got back late yesterday afternoon. Uh, Bridget, uh, Bridget uh, Brink is terrific mm -hmm. and has been there for some time, has an excellent team and is very courageously trying to fight for what we need, which is uh, this 60 billion dollars in U.S. aid. Uh, Congress is coming back this week. We need this. Like, who's we, Jane? 
The Senate's already acted, uh, and kudos to Mitch McConnell, Susan Collins, and others for producing a huge uh, victory in the Senate. But in the House, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, eight months' delay is way too much, and what's happening there is, sadly, Zelensky uh, and his people are, as he said, cutting the line. They're trying to fight the Russians across a long border with Russia, but without ammo and without uh, what's called long-range fires to hit back at the installations that are hitting them uh, and without uh, really good uh, anti This is a salesperson. Like, you, listen to this lady. She's, she's, this is a sales pitch. She's a salesperson selling a war. She works for the, she's part of the Aspen Institute. She works for the, for the, uh, the, she's like sits on the board of the national defense NGO bullshit that supports every war and figures out how to sell it to people. This woman is a sales. She just wrote a book about why we need to do more war and fund war all over the place. She's a salesperson for war, but let's keep going. Jamming equipment for the drones that they have in great numbers, uh, they have to uh, make decisions that, you know, we can't be here, we can only be there. Uh, by the way, one of the things we saw, Michael, that was amazing Listen was their own uh, aerospace industry. They are building low cost drones for $350 a copy. They are building uh, long range uh, drones. See, your investment really is good. Just give us, keep dumping money into this. See what's happening there? Uh, for about $5,000 a copy. And they are making their own tanks. If you act now, you'll get their own aerospace industry. The UK will do the, like, like, this is what this woman sounds like, like a salesperson. Uh, this oh. is an astounding thing. They've, they've changed their technology base to focus on this. And they're That's showing us how to do man. it. But without... The long range fire and without the other USA Patriot missiles, uh, they still can't win. You know, it is uh, a number of these missiles that the Congresswoman is talking about. I mean, they're made here in America. The money that Congress would pass is money to go to the here Pentagon so they can buy program. from American companies in places like Kentucky and Arizona and Absolutely. all over America. Mm -hmm. See, they're not even afraid to say it out loud. They're like, this is for companies in the U.S. This isn't even about Ukraine. We're fine grinding these people to a pulp. As long as we create jobs making weapons here in the good old US of A, you know, it's. Let's keep going a little bit. Seven, made in America first. 70% of that budget goes to US companies to backstop the weapons that are needed. <laughs> Simone Sanders, also a Biden surrogate, like literally worked for the Biden administration. And I can't imagine why it is in our interest not to send this aid yesterday, given the fact that if Ukraine loses or if Ukraine is depleted, Russia's going to move on into NATO and we're going to be involved in a land war. Seems to me this is a much cheaper, more effective way to handle this. Just give us the money or Putin's going to get you. Putin is going to get you unless you give us the money. So who, like, just real quick, I, this is something I pulled up on this woman, like, her world economic profile. I'm going to reject additional cookies here. Jane Harmon served nine terms in Congress as the U.S. representative for California's 36th Conditional District and was ranking member of the Intelligence Committee after 9-11. Oh, that really makes me like her a lot more. She left the house in 2011 to become the first woman president and CEO of the Wilson Center, transitioning to President Emerita in 2021. Currently, she chairs the Commission on the National Defense Strategy and Board on Freedom ha Board of Freedom House. She is also a trustee of the Aspen Institute, the Trilateral Commission, a presidential scholar at USC, and serves on the advisory boards of the Department of Homeland Security, NASA, and Iridium Communications, Inc. What is Iridium Communications, Inc.? Should we go down the wormhole here? I, I mean, I didn't, I should have done this research before we started, but uh, let's see what that is. Satellite communications. Hmm. I wonder if that's a conflict of interest, is it? You think, uh, you think that she makes any money from this let me go back sorry i didn't enlarge my screen either on that last view here of the uh world economic forum just see so she is a presidential scholar she serves on the advisory boards of the department of homeland security nasa and iridium communications a company that clearly sells satellites probably used for wars let's go back to 
Harmon's book, Insanity Defense, Why Our Failure to Confront Hard National Security Problems Makes Us Less Safe, was published by St. Martin's Press. So she's also selling a book on why we need to be more militaristic and dump more weapons into conflicts around the world. What a fantastic person. And I'm sure MSNBC mentions absolutely none of that when they have her on speaking. I mean, we mentioned this. I mean, it, it, it's worth reading from um, Senator Schumer's dear colleague letter that oh, he did yeah, send out to senators, really, really kind of talking about the agenda and talking about the mm -hmm. calendar ahead. And he notes in this letter, um, we continue to keep press, pressure on the House to act on the Senate passed national security supplemental. And later he says, I've spoken with Speaker Johnson, and I believe that he understands the threat of further delaying the national security supplemental. Yeah. But he has to ultimately decide for himself whether or not he will do the right thing for Ukraine. Well, Johnson's caught between a rock and a hard place and, and, and the Is reading, it? yeah, a little bit, because the reading that, uh, that I've picked up, Jane, here in Washington is that he, he is now in a much more inclined to want to do uh, the right thing That's what I hear. on Ukraine, but you still have the Marjorie Taylor Greens mm -hmm. of the world who Marjorie are Taylor Greens. Uh, stopping that. Does there come a point where this aid, as it's currently this got me thinking. I saw Marjorie Taylor Greene recently on Tucker Carlson. So let's see what she has to say about this. Let's hear directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak. There's not a lot we can do, but one person who actually serves in the U.S. Congress and who is saying the truth about this question out loud is a member from Georgia called Marjorie directly Taylor from the Green. horse's mouth. She joins us now to explain Marjorie what she's Taylor Greene's in take. the face of this insanity. Congresswoman, thank you so much for coming on. Do we mischaracterize any, thank any you for of having that? Me. Do you think? I mean, no, from not an outsider's all. perspective, it seems like Mike Johnson is working. The Speaker of the House, the Republican Speaker of the House, the supposed to conservative. She looks like she might have caught a little sunburn down in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> he's working with the Biden administration to put the priorities of Ukraine above the priorities of the United States and to do something that his own voters don't want him to do. Is, is that true, do you think? Yeah, that's absolutely true, Tucker, because the details of the foreign aid package that we're going to be voting on next week when we go back to Washington, we're reading about the details in the news. This is what Jane, the one Jane advocate is, is advocating for, Jane Harmon of the uh, of Iridium, Iridium Communications, Inc., as the Aspen Institute and the World Economic Forum. Let me tell you something. Not one Republican member of, of our conference that I have spoken to has any idea what is in this foreign aid package that's going to give $60 billion to Ukraine. And that is even the leadership offices. They haven't heard from Mike Johnson on the details. We're reading about it in the news the same way the American people are. And it's outrageous. When you saw Zelensky right there on that interview talking about, oh, we're going to lose territory. Oh, we really need this money. This $60 billion should have been approved yesterday. Let me tell you, we are losing our country. He sounds like Jane Harmon, who was actually just in Ukraine and probably going over talking points. With to Zelensky. the illegal invasion that's happening every single day at our southern border. And so I this am is so where, this is where the pivot is like, OK, the illegal invasion. OK, again, the illegal invasion has nothing to do with the border or vote. Like Republicans think that they're smuggling in Mexicans to sway the vote. Now, listen, there is proof to that theory. There is there's definitely some some uh, foundational data behind it. However, if they really want to steal an election, do you really think they need immigrants to vote? It's all done on computers. It's not difficult to hack these voting machines. If we really want fair elections, we need to have a paper trail and audits. But, you know, this is why the pivot to the migrant workers, it's again, it goes back to the pitting workers against each other when we're really kind of like all on the same team here. But I will say sunburned uh, MTG here has the right take on Ukraine. I'm going to show you why. I'm pissed off about it because the American people are pissed off about it. And while our so-called Republican Speaker of the House is only working with Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Ukraine first Mitch McConnell and the White House <laughs> and Jake Sullivan, who he talks to on the phone all the time, we are angry and people have had it. We don't want $60 billion to go to Ukraine because as we slept last night, Tucker, we just went $40 billion more into debt. And that's because the interest on in our debt is so huge and our debt. 
So this is where it gets a little disingenuous. And again, it's like, who fucking cares about the debt? But I, I want to show you one more thing before we close this out, because she is on the right path here. And I just, this is, I, I killed the sound on this again, but this is such a relevant piece of data for everyone to look at, because this right here is why we can't have nice things. People are like, why can't we have nice things? This is why. The, why are we doing this? This is such a scam on every level since World War II. Like, it, this is why everything is crumbling around us because all of our money is going to shit like this. And so, left or right, you know, it's the really the battle now is is not Marjorie Taylor Greene and you know the insurgent Republicans versus the establishment Republicans or you know, the left versus the Democratic Party, because the left is really on board with this at this point. The real battle is people that want a better country here versus people that are cool with this continuing on the path that it's been continuing on forever. And in fact, inflating even further, because it's like, look, I'm not even against the idea that of American hegemony. And I've said that before, you know, uh, I wasn't against it until our I realized how insanely corrupt our government and system is, but the reality is we could do a lot more through soft power and covert stuff with a surgical uh, intensity to maintain power than we do with these money laundering scams and these just dumping billions and billions of dollars un 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 you know with no accountability overseas. You know, I would be fine with some of this stuff too if they were like, okay. Here's the goal that we're spending this money to achieve. And here's like benchmarks we're hitting on the way to that goal. They don't even do that. There's no accountability. That's the thing. If there was accountability for this money, it would be a whole different story. If there were, you know, levers in place to say, hey, and as we can clearly see with the top line now here in 2011 and continuing, there is zero accountability for any of it, you know? We don't, we don't, we never pull the strings and go, okay, wait a minute. Like we're giving you X, you need to do Y or X is going away or going down substantially. You know, we don't have to completely pull it, but you know, this is our, if, 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 so again, the argument on in favor of this would be, Hey, you know, if by doing this, it gives us all this power around the world. Okay. Show us that power. Then show us that power because it doesn't look like it's working. I'm just making, I just want to be sure people know that I'm just making pragmatic arguments here. You know, I'm not anti-American. I'm not anti-Israeli. I'm not anti-anything, really. I'm not anti-Palestinian. I'm not anti, I'm just for like common sense and, you know, data-backed principles and against hypocrisy. And this is just crazy. So to cap this off, Watch this. We'll be on Capitol Hill next week to discuss emergency aid for Baltimore as it cleans up after last month's bridge collapse. A major step is clearing debris from the water and reopening shipping canals to the port of Baltimore. That alone will cost tens of millions of dollars. CBS News has learned Governor Moore will meet with Maryland's congressional delegation and the White House budget director about a path forward. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane has new reporting on this and joins us now. Now, this is just one example recently of stuff that we could spend $60 billion on. Take that money. If I was, in the, if I was a Republican in Congress right now, I'd be, hey, guess what, Ukraine? We're going to take this 60 billion that all these NGOs and Jane Harmons are advocating for sending to you guys and we're going to drop all of it 60 billion dollars on this bridge and we're going to make the best goddamn bridge you've ever seen and it's going to be like this high tech cyber bridge with like you know robotic gate whatever like for 60 billion dollars I'm sure you can build a goddamn insane bridge right poof and even if you don't get $60 billion for the bridge, even a fraction, even a billion dollars for the bridge would be fantastic because listen to what they're actually advocating for. Scott, what is the goal of Governor Moore's meetings Tuesday on Capitol Hill? Maggie's trying to unlock a Congress that is locked up on seemingly everything. In a different time, in a different era, this would be simple. It's simple to pass emergency funding through Congress when disaster. 
So again, this is why I wanted to show you this CBS clip again. They're trying to frame this as this deadlock. I guarantee you, if someone made this an issue in Congress, there would be bipartisan consensus. You just heard Marjorie Taylor Greene. Why aren't we spending this money here in America? That's her argument against the Ukraine funding. Master strikes in American city or an American state. But nothing is simple now. With divided control of Congress and those very narrow margins in the U.S. House, that have gridlocked them on the basic blocking and tackling of governing. So there'll be a summit of sorts, the Maryland congressional delegation, the governor of Maryland. and they So and this is, again, this is how they continue to paint the oppositions to the Ukraine funding as extremists. No one has ever asked Marjorie Taylor Greene or Matt Gates or any of these people that I've seen about this bridge. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if there was a, a smart Democrat in Congress who wasn't completely owned by the power structure there that said, hey, we're going to work with Republicans to, to cut the Ukraine funding and give it to the bridge rebuild in, in Maryland, that you would have an instant bipartisan consensus. So this guy's being disingenuous. As no, as Head no of the Office of Management and Budget trying to figure out what to request through Congress, what could pass and what could be immediately needed. Our CBS News reporting is that the Republican in the Maryland delegation, who has a very prominent perch on the House Appropriations Committee, says something in the ballpark of $100 million or less is needed immediately to clear that channel, get the port fund. $100 million. So I just, I just wanted to show you this to give you an idea of the scale here, the scale of $60 billion to Ukraine. And they're like, supposedly deadlocked over a hundred million for a bridge here in the United States and an insanely necessary bridge that's important to our infrastructure and shipping with in and out of the port of DC. This is the scale of insanity that we're dealing with. Functioning again, he wants the law that is passed to specify Meg that anybody found liable for this shipping company or otherwise will reimburse uncle sam for the expenses um, yeah, scott as you course. said nothing is simple now so based on imagine if they had that for weapons contractors you know if we don't win this war you're gonna have to pay us back 